I think we absolutely have a responsibility to fix what we've created, especially with the big dog, short lifespan. Well, nobody did it intentionally, but we have the technology and the understanding now that we didn't a few hundred years ago. If we bring this drug to market, I'll be able to directly tie my effort and my team's effort to potentially millions of dog life years gained. Uh, hi, my name is Celine Hollywood. I am the founder and CEO of Loyal. This is Della. She is my 12-year-old senior Roddy and one of the inspirations for Loyal. Loyal is a Series B startup. We are developing drugs to extend dog lifespan. I started the company about five years ago with a very explicit mission to get the first drug FDA approved for lifespan extension in any species, but obviously starting with dogs first. All the dog breeds we have today are artificial, right? We didn't domesticate the wolf and have a poodle pop up. We created all these dog breeds in hundreds of years ago when people didn't understand or even have a conception of genetics that we do today. Genes that people were inadvertently selecting for to make a dog bigger meant that they grew at a much faster rate. So basically once the puppy was born, they were turning over at a much faster rate to go into that big skeletal maturity state. But the problem is that after the dog was fully grown, that high rate of cellular turnover, so to speak, was still going very quickly. So these big dogs are actually aging mechanistically at a faster rate. And that's why you'll see in a Great Dane, they'll maybe live seven or eight years, while a Chihuahua lives 17 to 18 years. And the kind of insight was that this genetic pathway that we selectively bred dogs for size is actually a very well-known longevity pathway where the same relationship between size and lifespan has been shown. IGF-1 and growth hormone are these two little signaling peptides, right? These little hormones that circulate in your blood. One of the things they tell cells to do is to divide, to grow. When we're in puberty, we actually have spikes in growth hormone and IGF-1. That is very normal. Once we're fully grown, those levels go down to a basal rate that's much lower than what you see in puberty. The problem with big dogs is that that doesn't turn down afterwards, so they still have this super, super high level that's binding to these cells and causing a lot of problems. Our first drug on market will be Loy2. We're working on a lot of drugs, but this was really kind of the inception of the company and actually the first product we worked on. And it works by just lowering IGF-1 signaling about 40%, bringing it to a level that is seen naturally in dogs, but in smaller dogs who therefore have a longer life. One of the why nows of Loyal was the creation of a new regulatory pathway by the FDA for veterinary medicine called expanded conditional approval that allows drugs that are very difficult to bring to market because proving their efficacy definitively will take a really, really long time or be very complicated, but otherwise have strong shorter term data. And that regulatory pathway made it logistically and financially feasible, candidly, to work on something as audacious and ambitious as a dog longevity drug. We've gotten RxC um, efficacy approval twice now. The first time we got it for the big dog short lifespan drug, I was in New York City, I was in a meeting and looked down on my phone, I'm getting a call from my reg exec and I just bail at this coffee meeting. And they tell me that we got it and I immediately start screaming, then start crying in the streets of New York City. And then 10 minutes later, we do a Zoom meeting with the entire team to tell them that we got it. It's so risky and it's so difficult and it's so insular sometimes to work on these things. I think the team was very, very proud of that achievement. I mean, that's something that they'll, you know, keep with them for the rest of their lives that they've now earned two efficacy approvals from the FDA. We are currently running the largest ever veterinary clinical trial. It's currently over 1,200 dogs. The study will run for five years. It's 60 clinical sites across the U.S. And the goal is to, over the next five years, monitor these dogs, see what their health outcomes are, and see if the dogs who are on our drug hopefully live a statistically longer life, but also have a higher quality of life. So dog drugs are regulated by the FDA. They're very strongly regulated. It's a common misconception that they're not. The biggest thing that would help us as an organization is if the review time was three months instead of six months. These agencies should be staffed more significantly to help facilitate more drugs getting reviewed faster. 
get this drug approved, bring it to market, create a new product category, normalize the idea of an aging drug, bring more aging drugs to market, take the revenue, take the biological insights from our dog drugs, start doing R&D for human drugs. If you can make something that works for a dog to extend their lifespan, it's not one-to-one -one that's gonna work in a human, but it's much more compelling biological evidence, and it's much more relevant to humans than doing it in a mouse or a rat is. The FDA said, yeah, you can develop this drug for lifespan extension and calcium extension in dogs. It is on the veterinary side, but it's the same federal regs, it's the same overarching philosophy, and it set a precedent. And regulation is law, and law is all set off of precedents. One of the reasons I, I'm very passionate about this is, you know, I had a, a dog named Wolfie who passed away and she had cancer. And obviously I was like horrified when I found out and, you know, got a surgical resection. And she was in so much pain after she got the tumors removed that I didn't do, do chemo because I was like, I can't put her through this. The way I've always thought about it is moments in your life and the importance of your childhood pet being there. I really want Della, my old lady, to be there for my wedding and to meet my first kid. And with a Roddy's average lifespan, she's, she's at it with the standard care if she's not going to get there. And it's heartbreaking, right? It's heartbreaking that, you know, my future kids will most likely never meet this girl. If we don't pull this off, it'll burn the space for everyone else. Like the classical, you know, space example is SpaceX, right? Where they had that last rocket and they were gonna run out of money afterwards. And what if that rocket had exploded? Maybe SpaceX would have made it through, maybe it wouldn't have. Would that have burned the idea of reusable rockets? Maybe. It certainly would take longer for Loyal to exist if we, you know, exploded the rocket. I could have gone down a supplement or dog food path that had a product on the market years ago and it would have been great and lucrative and whatnot. I wanted to show that we could take an aging drug through one of the most rigorous regulatory processes in the world and earn approval just like anybody else.